Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to design and laser cut these card storage boxes for your favorite card game. Hi, and welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And I have a great project today, it's card storage boxes. I've designed these to go with my current favorite game, Arkham Horror, but you could design it for any of your favorite games, a living card game you're going to be expanding over time. I've built an acrylic version that has a mother of pearl inlay. I've built a wooden version that has a wood inlay on the top, so I'll talk about how to do that. And I've really designed this box from the inside out based on the cards that I'm going to be storing, the fact that I'm going to put them in card sleeves and the size of the card sleeves, and I've created dividers that are color-coded and have symbols on them that really define what class of cards will be going in that section of the box. I've also chosen to make the footprint of the box similar to the size of the Arkham Horror box because that means things from the box, including of course the rule book, fit easily inside and you can take it all with you on game night. So I'll talk about how to make all of this in this episode. I do all my design work in Adobe Illustrator and I start with a drawing where I create the images that I put on the divider cards. All the reference images I could find were small and blurry so I had to create these all from scratch using the pen tool. I have an in-depth tutorial on how to do this and I'll put the link at the end of the video. Then I created a drawing for the box and I have references here for the size of the card, but most importantly for the size of the sleeve that the card's going to be in. And I know that the Arkham box is about 10 inches by 10 inches, so that's what I'm shooting for is the outside footprint. The first thing I create is the divider. There's the reference for the sleeve size. I'll make it a little bit wider at 3 inches, and I'm going to put these tabs at the top. They'll fit into the slots. And this green square is where I'm going to place the images that I'm pulling over from the other drawing and I'll always size them to fit into that space so they're uniform. Notice I just use one divider drawing and I just keep turning on and off different images. I thought through the layout using this top-down image where the red are the 3 inch wide and 10 inch long rows where the cards will be. The green are the slotted rails and there's four of those and then I have the actual outside of the box itself. And when I check how big this is in total, it's about 10.32 by 10.47 inches. And I get those numbers from building from the inside out. Next I design the rails and I put the slots in for the eighth inch acrylic and I put them every three eighths of an inch. Makes it asymmetrical, so I'm gonna to have to be careful about that when I install these rails. And I do a side view because the two center rails have tabs to hold them in place. And so I build a side view of that, including the location of the tabs, because I'm going to use that to lay out the front and the back. I also do the sides of the actual box itself, and they too will have tabs that fit into the front and the back. And I build a side view of those. So when I create the front and the back, I can pull in those two reference shapes the slots for the rails and I'll know exactly where to put the holes in the front and the back to hold the two rails in place and the slots that are going to be on the sides and I know where to put the notches in so that the two fit together perfectly. I had decided I wanted the top to sit flush on the box but to be held in place by uh, raised corners so to do that, I added these tabs at the top of the sides and the front and the back. They're all three quarters of an inch long and a quarter inch tall on both of these. Now these uh, sides and front and back butt join against each other. So when you look at the top down view for the box, I had to put those two three quarter inch slots together the way they'd be oriented. I brought them to the top of the drawing and then I used the Pathfinder tool to say, to select the top and say minus the front and it cut out the space where those two tabs would be sticking up. The last element I needed to design was the AH I wanted to put on the top of the box. I found a font I really liked and then uh, made it the size that I thought was appropriate and then you say type and you pick create outlines 
And that basically turns a font into a vector drawing so that you can deal with it like any other vector drawing. And I have a black version so it carves a pocket in the top, but I have the outline version because that's what I'll use to cut the inlay. When I cut the acrylic, I left the paper on the front and the back of all the pieces so that I could minimize the smoke damage from the laser. When you get to wood, though, you don't have that paper, so you have to do some cleanup with light sanding uh, before assembly. On my laser, the black solid makes it do this raster action here where it's carving a pocket in the wood. I change the settings to make it a deeper pocket than normal. I assemble everything as I go to make sure that it all works, even if it means just taping it together with masking tape. Here I am cutting the 1 8 inch acrylic in all the different colors uh, based on the Arkham Horror game. Different symbols are associated with different colors, and these are the dividers. Some of the generic dividers, uh, which indicate expansions, I did in gray. The tricky thing about cutting thin inlay material is that the ventilation of the laser can suck out the item after you've cut it. So I always work to the very front of the laser bed. I tape over the vent and I tape down my materials. Here is the inlay I tested in the pocket. It fits perfectly. And I'm also cutting this natural shell veneer, this mother of pearl. I bought this on Amazon. It's about $18 for a sheet of it. It's kind of hard to see because I'm working in the front of the laser bed, but you can see here the laser cutter cutting out those letters. Here's the acrylic. It's still got the paper on the front, but I can test it in the pocket and it fits great. I used Aileen's Tacky Glue, which I carefully apply with a stylus into the pocket to put and hold the inlay in place. I use acrylic fusing liquid to assemble the acrylic box. I use granite samples to help hold things at a right angle while I'm fusing to the base. I do three sides first and then I put in the center rails and I put on the front. Then I have to set it on its side and I fuse the four corners. And this fusing is an incredibly strong hold. I have to fuse in the side rails that don't have slots and that box is done. Fusing liquid works in about a minute, but the wood box is put together with wood glue and that takes much longer to dry. So here I'm using a combination of clamps and granite blocks to hold it in place while it dries. Then I glue it to the base and I use the weights to hold it down. I also glued in those side rails. I used bry wax to finish the box. You can see that process on my Gwent board video. And I really like how both of the boxes turned out. I have lots of other great projects I'm working on, so if you're interested, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.